With it being isolated since the Cretaceous period, New Zealand has developed a truly unique ecosystem, one that until recently was nearly devoid of land mammals entirely. In their absence, birds swooped in, pun intended, to fill the niches left vacant by their absence. From the kiwi filling the niche of nocturnal insectivore to multiple species of penguin inhabiting its shores, the birds of New Zealand are truly unique. Perhaps the most unique of all, however, is one that is sadly no longer with us, this being the truly enormous moa. With the largest species standing close to 12 feet tall and weighing over 230 kilograms, these birds would have filled the large herbivore niche, and boy do those stats certainly match. As mentioned however, these birds sadly are no longer with us, having gone extinct only around 700 years ago due to overhunting by the recently arrived Polynesian people. Despite this extinction, we know a surprising amount about how this bird looked, not only because it has some of the best preserved fossil material ever, but perhaps because it preserved a little too well. Multiple specimens of this bird have been found with soft tissues such as muscles, ligaments, feathers and skin still attached to the body, which is truly remarkable. But how and why does this particular bird have so many well-preserved specimens? Well, let's find out. These birds belong to the group known as the Ratites. This group contains mostly flightless birds, with the only species possessing the ability to fly being the South American Tinamou. Interestingly, these guys are in fact the Moa's closest living relative. Despite its relative being the only member of the group able to fly, Moa's took their flightlessness to the next level, losing all evidence of their wings entirely. Now on the ground and with no large herbivores on the island, these birds began growing extensively peaking in the South Island giant moa, but being on the ground isn't all it's cracked up to be. As a result of this adaptation, the birds were now forced to nest on the ground, making their eggs and themselves vulnerable to hunting from humans. In fact, this hunting is what led to their extinction, with eggshells and fossils of multiple species being found in Maori middens, aka prehistoric rubbish bins. As I just mentioned, several species have been found at these sites, and since its discovery, or rediscovery I guess, and naming by Richard Owen in the 1830s, nearly 60 species have been proposed, but modern consensus now attribute 9 species to 3 genera, with 2 unnamed species from St. Bathans, which include <gasps> North Island Giant Moa, South Island Giant Moa, Bush Moa, Eastern Moa, Broadbilled Moa, Heavy Footed Moa, Mantel's Moa, Crested Moa, Upland Moa, and a Moa in a pear tree. Whilst with all these species clearly showing evidence to the contrary, when Richard Owen published his theory that large flightless birds once roamed New Zealand, his peers thought the idea preposterous, but they were soon proven wrong. In the years following this, multiple specimens of these birds were uncovered, with some being preserved in incredible detail, producing what I like to call the moa mummies. But what exactly is a mummy? Well, a mummy is a human or animal whose soft tissues have become preserved. This happens when the recently deceased is exposed to chemicals, extreme cold, low humidity, lack of air, or all of the above. This preserves the specimen in... Um disturbingly great detail. What's brilliant about this process is that it has no bias, preserving small specimens such as a penguin colony to massive animals such as steppe bison and the aforementioned moa. Before I move on from this however, I want to make something clear. No, unfortunately, no dinosaur mummies have been found. Whilst there are specimens that have been called mummies, they are in fact not true mummies. These specimens don't preserve any actual soft tissue, only having mineralized imprints of them, which makes them extremely rare, as this means they are fossils of mummies, two rare events for the price of one. Now, with that definition sorted, let's meet just some of these amazing specimens, starting with... The first moa mummy discovered belonged to the South Island giant moa. In, and I apologize for any mispronunciation going forward, Manhu Herakia Valley, a fossil attributed to a female of this species was uncovered, and at the time was the most complete specimen found, with only a few vertebrae and a toe bone missing. 
Amazingly, this individual preserved the ligaments and skin of the left knee along with feathers, which were the first discovered. Unfortunately, for some unknown reason, the soft tissue was removed from the specimen, which now sits in the Yorkshire Museum over in England, a long way from home indeed. A fun fact about this specimen was that it was said by its discoverers that the individual was found atop of four moa chick fossils, but this was sadly never confirmed. One day, a young boy who was on his way to his father's gold mine stumbled upon a cave. A typical day in New Zealand, I guess? Upon informing his father, the two returned to the site dubbed Ernst Clue Cave, and upon its inspection, found the preserved neck of the species the Eastern Moa, which had both skin and feathers attached. Analysis showed that the feathers around the neck were relatively sparse indicating that this species' head and neck were covered in coarse rough skin instead of feathers. The little bush moa was the smallest of all the species, being roughly around the size of a turkey, but not to be outdone, it too has a mummy assigned to it. The specimen was uncovered in the Echo Valley and was found with, you guessed it, preserved skin and feathers. Along with this, the individual skeleton possessed a fully articulated vertebral column and had both its right and left femurs held in place by cartilage. The feathers of this specimen tell us a lot as well, showing the coloration of this species would be a yellowish brown. Interestingly, eggshells have also been found in the vicinity of this individual. So, who knows, this may have been a mama bird. But instead, this is probably the result of, um unfortunate circumstances that I'll get into detail about later. Now, while finding a moa mummy is pretty cool, imagine finding the moa mummy of an entirely new species. Well, that's what was uncovered near a cave in Queenstown, where the type specimen of the upland moa was uncovered. The actual story of its discovery isn't known, However, it was stated to have been found by two miners in a cave that had been uncovered by a landslide. This specimen was sent to the Natural History Museum where it still resides today. The specimen preserves the head, neck and right foot of the animal. The animal's head preserves a lot of detail, such as its eyeballs, tongue and trachea. Analysis also revealed that the head of the specimen was covered in feather pits that indicate this species had small feathers covering it. From this, we could gather that this species was covered nearly entirely in feathers, with only its beak and soles of its feet being uncovered. Speaking of the feet, the foot is often described as being that of a non-avian dinosaur. But sorry to burst your bubble, but this belongs to the avian variety. The foot also shows the bony claws still attached, and analysis showed that the middle toe in particular was rather muscular, for whatever reason. Now, these are just a few of the many that have been uncovered, but why exactly does the moa have so many mummies? Well, it does help that the moa only recently went extinct. The extinction date of the moa is estimated to be 1446, around 800 years ago from the modern time, which is relatively recent when it comes to other mummified specimens we have. But obviously, 800 years is still plenty of time for a body to decompose, so there's obviously a bit more to it. As people may have realised, most of the examples given were uncovered from caves or caves that had become covered. This environment is near perfect for preservation of soft tissues with them lacking humidity and having relatively low temperatures. The region of New Zealand they are found in also helps. All mummies of the moa have been found on New Zealand's southern island, but more importantly, the majority come from the central Otago region. This area is characterised by being the coldest and driest region of New Zealand, which just adds to the perfect conditions for preservation. So, with all these moa specimens being found in caves, this raises the question as to why they ended up here. Well, I'd like to know that too, but from what I could see, research on the exact reason is unknown. If anyone knows of any research done as to why moa end up in caves so often, please send it my way. From what I could gather, there are two possible theories, however. One is the expansion of the New Zealand forest. With forests becoming denser, it was suggested that the moa would often wander into them before wandering into the caves on accident, possibly looking for food. Once here, the moa would become lost and would eventually die, allowing the body to be preserved. The second less tragic way, I guess, 
results from them being placed here. As mentioned earlier, Moa specimens have often been found in Maori middens. These were basically where Maori would dump domestic waste, and for them, this would consist of Moa bones and eggshells. Moa bones from certain caves have been found in close proximity to Maori hunting camps. It is suggested that butchered Moa remains would be thrown into the cave, or that the Maori people would have killed the Moa inside the cave. Whatever the reason, we should be thankful to have such specimens in the first place that can tell us so much about this incredible bird, and gleam an insight into what it must have been like for us to have seen one in the flesh. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, learning all about the magnificent Moa mummies. If you know anyone else interested in this topic, please send the video their way. And if you're interested in this natural world of ours, please consider subscribing or following the Instagram page in the description below. Until next time, bye bye From this and other specimens, we have been... What? what? I gotta say this. A fossil attributed to... I've got to say that right.